Hi everyone, the next topics I want to talk about is stopping times. So as always I'm assuming that we have a probability space and we have a filtration in there, so I'm not going to write that explicitly out. <coughs> and so the definition of a stopping time is the following. So oops, I knew this is going to happen. <coughs> So the definition of a stopping time is the following, uh, let t be a random variable which is taking values of uh, non-negative integers, it could also take infinite, okay, so t is either a finite positive integer or it's infinity. This thing is a stopping time. And again, I want to emphasize here that this is a random variable. And this t is a random variable. It is a stopping time if the following is true. The um, event that t is smaller than or equal to n, this event is fn measurable, if it's in fn for every n. Smaller than or equal to infinity. So also for infinity, okay? Now imagine the filtration Fn as kind of a system, kind of the, the history of a process. So you have the sigma algebras, they describe some information on your process, and this is an increasing filtration, an increasing system of sigma algebras, so you get more and more information as time passes. And this, this uh, condition here, expresses the fact that if I want to ask whether the stopping time has come by time n or not, that information is included uh, in everything that happened up to time n. In other words, for in order to say whether this stopping time has come by n or not, I do not need to look into the future. I do not need to look into anything finer than fn. I don't need to know about fn plus 1, fn plus 2, and so on. It's enough to know about fn. With a kind of strange example, the day of my heart attack is a stopping time. The day before my heart attack, unfortunately, is not a stopping time. There is no way I can tell, right, the day before. So uh, that's kind of a, a strange example, not very nice, but uh, probably it's uh, useful. Okay, and I want to make a second part of this definition, namely if I have any process I can stop this process by taking the minimum of the stopping time and n. And let me explain in a second what this notation is, but first let me say that this is the stopped process. Stopped at the stopping time. Okay, so, so what is this notation? Uh, t min n is just the smaller of t and n. Okay, and if they are equal, then of course it's equal to that. So, so what is going on is, if I just want to make a little picture of, of, of what's happening, if I have my original process as just some random variables indexed by n, so it's a bigger, smaller, whatever it does. Okay, that was my original process. What is going to be uh, the stopped process, the stopped process x t mean n, or if you want x n t, if t happens to be, say, this value, if t equals to this value here, then the stop process will follow the original process up to this point, and from here on, if I increase n, t is going to be smaller than n, so the index will not change. The index will stay on at the stopping time, so the process is actually going to be a constant from here. I'm just freezing the process at the stopping time. Okay, so that is going to be the stop process. Okay, now I want to show you a lemma about stopping times, which is going to be quite useful in a short while and this lemma is about expectations of stopping times 
So this is a small lemma, but very useful. Let t be a stopping time. Okay. If and suppose that the following happens, if there exists an n fixed number, so this is not random. Okay, this is not random. Let me add here not random fixed number integer and a positive epsilon again not random so these are fixed non-random numbers such that uh, such that the following is true the probability that t is less than or equal to little n plus big n conditioned on everything up to n is at least epsilon for all n then the statement is that the stopping time has finite mean okay so what is the meaning of this condition <coughs> it says that suppose anything up to time n fn the filtration fn or the, the nth member of the filtration contains all information of my processes up to time n if whatever happened up to time n the probability that I'm going to have my stopping time in a further big n steps is at least epsilon. Whatever happened up to time n, with probability at least epsilon, I'm going to stop in big n steps, then the expectation is finite. Okay? Now, let me prove this. Let me prove this. The proof goes like this. So let's start with the probability that t is larger than k times a big N. This is a big N. Okay? Let me, let me start looking at this event. Now, I'm going to make something very strange here. I'm going to intersect this event with a larger event. This larger event is that t is larger than k minus 1n. Okay, so clearly, if t is larger than kn, then it's also larger than k minus 1n, so this event is larger than that event, and the intersection is the original t larger than kn for this reason. So why did I do that? Because now I can write this as a conditional probability given the same thing, times the probability of my condition. Okay? Now, if you look at the definition of a stopping time, here is an important uh, observation. The definition of a stopping time says that t is more than or equal to n is in fn. If I look at the complement of that, the complement of this event is that t is larger than uh, n. Or in other words, if you want larger than or equal to n minus 1. Uh, let's just use larger. Larger than n. That's the complement of this. And because of a sigma algebra, because of the properties of sigma algebra, complements are included. So that implies, the definition of stopping time implies that if I want to ask the, the event that my stopping time is bigger than present, so it, is, it has not yet come, that's also measurable according to everything up to time n. And this is what I'm going to use, because now what I'm going to, to say is that uh, this event here is in the sigma algebra, this event here, is in the sigma algebra f of k minus 1 n, just by the very same observation as here. The event that t larger than something is in that filtration, in that member of the filtration. So t larger than k minus 1 n is in f k minus 1 n. Okay, now, what I said before, the, the assumption was, that conditioning on some fn 
if the probability that t is less than or equal to n plus big N is at least epsilon. Now, this is kind of the scenario I have here. So I'm conditioning on an event which is member of fk minus 1n, and I'm asking about the probability that t is larger than k minus 1n plus another n. k minus 1n plus another n, which is kn. So what I'm asking here is essentially the complement of this thing here. It's the complement of the, the uh, probability, well, it's 1 minus the probability, or the probability of the complement, that t is smaller than or equal to my time plus another n. Here I'm asking t larger than my time, which is k minus 1 n, plus another n, which gives me kn. Okay? So this probability is 1 minus that probability, when n equals to k minus 1 n, and therefore the assumption was that the original green thing is at least epsilon, is larger than epsilon, 1 minus that must be smaller than or equal to 1 minus epsilon. So this part here is smaller than or equal to 1 minus epsilon, just looking at 1 minus the green stuff, okay? Times the probability of the condition as before, so I'm just copying this term here, okay? And this is true for every n. Now, I can actually continue this line of thought and say that then this thing is smaller than or equal to 1 minus epsilon times probability t larger than k minus 2n, which is smaller than or equal... So, so I, can, I can do a recursive formula here, and I can just plug in the subsequent... Uh, subsequent uh, terms of this form, probability t larger than some number of n, and if I do that enough number of times, then eventually I can actually do this k times, and I get 1 minus epsilon to the k times the probability that t is larger than 0, which is bounded by 1, so I'm not going to bother with writing here some kind of a zeros term. So what I arrive to is that the probability that t is larger than kn is bounded by 1 minus epsilon to the k's power. Okay, so this is a, the next step is a, is a simple fact about non-negative integer random variables. So t is a stopping time, it's a non-negative integer. Any non-negative integer random variables expectation can be written as the sum of the tail probabilities. If you haven't seen this in probability 1, then uh, just do it as a homework. Write this probability up as a sum, t equals l plus 1, t equals l plus 2, t equals l plus 3, and so on, probabilities added up. Swap the two summations, and you see immediately that you get the expectation of t. Okay? Now, I claim that this is smaller than or equal to n times the sum of the probability that t is larger than kn. And now you wonder why that is true. And I show you in a picture. It's just, this has nothing to do with probability, it's just a simple fact about any numbers. So why is that true? These things in L are non-increasing. These events themselves are non-increasing. So this was a wrong attempt of explaining it. Let me start over. So what is happening is that you have these numbers here, which are decreasing in L. So it's something like this. And then instead of looking at the sum of these values, what I'm going to do is block these values out. So I'm looking at the first n of them, and then again n of them, and then again n of them, and so on and so on. So these are of length n. And instead of summing them up each, what I'm looking at is just look at the left end of my interval, see the value there, and add these numbers up n times. So that accounts for n times probability t larger than 0 to start with. And then when k is 1, then I'm going to have n times the probability that t is larger than 
1 n so this is the value n and I'm looking at a constant height here n times and then again I'm looking at the next block when k is 2 and I'm looking at the constant value of that height again n times here are the factor n's these are the factor n's and what I get if I do this summation what I get is clearly larger than or equal to the original orange point so it's larger than or equal to the original sum okay so this is why I have that inequality but then I can use the estimation from the previous line and I get n times the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 minus epsilon to the k as an upper bound which is easy to sum up it's just the geometric sum 1 minus epsilon is smaller than 1 so it converges and it gives me n over 1 minus 1 minus epsilon or just n over epsilon which is finite and that's all I needed expectation of t is finite